it is time to crusade for Duke Folk of the Duchy of Berry in France. Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel. And some fun that's about, well, I say fun, we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> to start, as we head off, or the Duke of Berry, of Berry, uh, Duke Folk of Anjou is about ready to go on crusade, as it were. So we're going to raise an army. Of course, the, uh, the Duke himself will be leading this host. And it is now time to head to Pomerania. Uh, bit by bit. Um... We'll first just uh, head across the sea to England and then continue moving on our way. Eleanor is no longer court physician. She has passed away. Oh, no. Let's take a look at that. We need a court physician. Is anybody? Nope. Nope. Nobody. Nobody would be good at that. So we'll go here to decisions and search for a physician. Meantime, I did notice that we have a prisoner. He's already been in for 23 months and for a hook. Ransom him for a hook. Fair enough. Strategic impasse. I'm sitting around the map table with Count Thibault and Count Barthélemy discussing our strategy for the ongoing war. Thibault bangs his fist on the table and loudly proclaims he should, we should charge the enemy directly and crush them with the sheer might of our armies. While Barthélemy explains how we need to watch what our foes do and respond accordingly. It is my right to decide our ultimate course of action. So, Count Barthélemy of Isidore, he's a minus 19, brother-in-law, spy master and vassal. And Count Thibault is a vassal and a knight, and he really doesn't like us. I know how we can employ both strategies. I do like that. Don't gain any... Nobody likes us more. Mm, my commanders can act as they each see fit. Or we take it. Hmm. I... Thibault is leading a faction against us. He's looking for independence, so I don't want to boost Thibault. I want to boost Count Barthélemy's plan. If anything, we gain improved maneuverability. Because improved offense. Enemy casualties plus 10%. This is where the slyness and strategy of Duke Folk come into play. We've gained a favor hook on Manassas de Cadista. Court Physician. Okay. Udal Schalk could be one. And he's an aggressive attacker. He's quite experienced. Orson. And none of these are exactly what we want, but Udashak it will be. Impeccable household, we've gained some more prestige. County Bull's friendship. Well, as numerous attempts to curry my favor, I'm not going to notice. I cannot feel but irritated by County Bull's sudden interest in me. I cannot shake the feeling the man's intentions are not pure. He still no. Uh, why can he not leave me in peace? Never want to see his face again. Hmm, friendship. He wants to be close. I don't trust him. Folk. If this is the folk from House Anjou that I think it is, it's Folk the Black. I need to double check that, actually, in the history records. Uh, and Folk the Black was... Was, was not a great dude. Let's put it that way. 
Uh, Stefan Longsby is no longer um, successor. The Fox of Tour gains the manipulator attribute. Robert Dashu. Okay, so now we are sitting in England. A notable guest has arrived. And I think now we will move on to Schleswig. And then from Schleswig, we will land in Dithmarschen. By the way, this has always been one of my issues whenever I see an EU4. Allow me this little tangent here. Um, EU4 Let's Play series. English speakers always say Dithmarschen. It's Dithmarschen. The H is silent. Anyway. To the implacable folk, I have been corresponding with your Chancellor, Mayor Giraud, and I must say that I have come to see you in a new light. Perhaps you are even someone that one day would I one day would be proud to call my friend. This is Duke, the Duke of Brittany. Oh, that might not be a bad alliance to go down. You can see sailing here on the North Sea coast of the Low Country. Are our troops. Sway. Pushing luck. I finished reading the latest letter from my spy master, Count Barthelemy, and smile. He seems to have warmed to me at last. While this is a success, I am tempted to use this opportunity to try and get even closer. I put on my diplomatic skills test. Um, I will let Onfroy handle this. Ooh, yes. The victory is enough. You know what? The victory is enough. We will take it. Now, um, the Duke and his troops have landed. And it is time to march into the enemy territory. We can see the English soldiers are all sitting out here. I don't know where they're going. Hey guys, where are you going? They're sailing around England? And we're kind of sitting here. Now they're sailing back. Okay. Uh, it would be good to, to really get stuck in. Here we can see the uh, army of Slesvik coming in from Denmark as we are working on the siege of Lupe uh, Lubeck. Court amenities setting invalidated. Okay. And the Fox of Tours needs a worthy successor. A successor to him. Seek worthy accolade successor. You can designate a guardian for your son, Julien d'Anjou. Udalshalk, our court physician. He's not bad. We will do that and keep an eye on what is happening here. See some allies around. Plush and exotic carpet. A plush carpet, vibrant and soft, arrives as a gift from Duke Conson. Consent of Brittany. Why he would send me such an exquisite gift, I do not know, but the fine weave of the carpet is as pleasing to the touch as the skin of a lover. This carpet will cover the floors in my rooms. Plush and exotic carpet for 10 years. Prestige plus 20%. Hostile scheme resistance minus 10%. I do want to point out the oddity of receiving something whilst actually not being anywhere near court. You know. CK3 world, I guess. All right, we've won a siege of Lübeck. And arrange a betrothal to the impressive folk. With your permission, I would like to betroth your daughter, the impressive Emmengan. This is the Duchy of Auvergne. Children born of this marriage will be Duke Bodin's dynasty, Dovania. I'm okay with that. It gives us a very powerful ally in the Duke of Auvergne. That's fine. I'm perfectly more than happy with that. All right, let's take a look down here. How's this war going? So they're all being poured to the east. So we're just going to start slowly but surely making our way through the lands of the heathens here. Accolade successor found. Okay. Soldier of the Cross. Our army stand poised to take part in the crusade for Pomerania. Well, we're already there. Uh, St. George willing, we will soon rise victorious. The blood of the heathens painting the soil red. May St. George lead us to victory. So we are now gained the trait crusader. And time for a new 
a new siege here in the same time. I'll just scroll out of that so we don't hear that banging the whole time. The Fox of Tours and a successor, Guillaume, your knight. Perfect. Done there. We've got a new Martial Lifestyle perk. Turn down the speed just a little bit here. We can go with Envelopment, Men at Arms, Counter Efficiency plus 25%. And hit and run. So we treat losses minus 25%. Spearman, archer, skirmisher damage. All of those up. We're going to go with envelopment for right now. I think that just helps us right now. Easier. Dutch, you declare war on Dutch's Ava. Why? Count Thibault's claim of the county of Poitiers. Ah, okay. Well, we're not going to worry about that just yet. The new bishop, Onfroy, has died. Well, let's take a look at our bishop. He does like us, so I'm okay with that. Alone in the kitchen. Greetings, my lord. Gavel, one of the cooks says. I have your grandson Fulk with me here. He promised to clean the pots in the cookery, you see. He draws in a sharp breath. But he gobbled down every sweet he could find, like a little pig. Now he's all sweaty and red from exerting himself eaten. Folk never could resist sweet things, but this might be taking a bit too far. Remember, no one can tell you what you can, cannot eat. Don't waste your energies on people like this, boy. You should treat Gavel better. Yeah, let's be a little harsher with the kid. Or no one can tell you what to do. Hmm. What, do you, what would he do? I mean, Folk the Black, dark-hearted. He's ambitious, deceitful, greedy, arbitrary. I think, you know what? I'm not going to have a cook telling him what he can and cannot do. Who are you, man? Camp Cooks constructed in Touraine? Excellent. I do have to say, sometimes the AI movement is stuff that just is weird. Uh, word appreciates spouse's tutelage. Ally joins war. Countess Yolanda. Alright, we're just a few days away from gaining a holding here. And then we can continue moving on, I would say, along the coast here. Just keep heading over this way. Um, the enemy is not looking like they're in too good of a state. Okay, so now we will move on here. Take the next castle along the way. Right now, our attrition is at 0%. Siege 1, gained 14 more gold. Now, on to the next. And we can see here they're we got eight months left for this one. Uh, we see an enemy f army coming north. And now we are caught in battle with a larger force coming in. Will we gain some allies here in time to help us in this battle? Maybe, if at all, no. Fallen Sun. Amidst the chaos that engulfs the forest of Kirsipenia, I attempt to catch my bearings. Across the field I spot Robert desperately fighting. Velician pikemen are slowly surrounding him, his exhaustion only too clear. The glint of a sword suddenly catches my eye, and I watch as Petrus, knight of Duchess Cornell, delivers the vicious death blow. I could not have saved him, but no parent should outlive their son. Petrus will not get away with this. Oh boy, swore to avenge death. Our sister has died. Alliance has expired. That is not good. We lost that battle. Faction targeting you has disbanded. Why? Because the other Crusaders would not come in to support us. I'll be honest, losing a son in that manner when we had so many allied crusading armors, armies around us, we gained some more taxes. Great. Um, I mean, to say that I'm not happy... Liege has entered a regency, is an understatement. Now, now they're stepping in to fight against the Pomeranians and have defeated them. Okay, we're going to move back down here and work on this siege. 
Oh, there's a small, small army there that lost. And now the siege of Veligrad will continue. Ah, that was frustrating to lose in that manner. I mean, now we could move out further, but uh, we're just gonna we're gonna stay here as part of this siege. Losing our son, we need to find a new marshal, and he is our steward. I'm not gonna change him. Not Gerard. Our court physician and knight Udashak is actually pretty good. Assigned Bohemond de Men, personal champion. Geoffrey d'Anjou, our player heir. He's a crusader, he's a tough soldier. And we're going to assign our other son, Geoffrey, an heir as the marshal. As frustrating as all of this is to have lost Robert in such a interesting manner. Our friend Henri, Duke Henri, has died. That's a shame. Everyone's just dying around him. Let's get a, a bigger uh, bird's eye view here of how the crusade is progressing here. You can see uh, we've got a pretty large contingent here in the eastern lands. Looks like we've got the English out here. A curse undone. The twists and turns of fate have not always been to my advantage. God knows that I was cursed the day I met Petrus. Today, however, the curse has been lifted. Fate has smiled upon me and brought that abhorrent knave to his grave. Not one day too soon. Good, I'm glad the murderer of our son has died. Count Barthélemy is not swayed, but ah, he's strong enough. Uh, or sorry, our relationship with him is good enough now that I'm not overly concerned with that. Increased military presence. Actually, uh, who else is there real quick? Take a look at our vassals here. Thibaut of Barry, he likes us more. Mere Anon, he does not. So what we're going to do here is we're going to sway her. Uh, him, sorry. And Thibault is actually in prison. I want to pay a ransom, but will not accept because we are at war. Aha, uh -huh, so Thibault is currently captured by the Pomeranian heathens. War score at 75% right now. How's this coming? It's going to be done here in a couple of days. Then we can move on. I'm going to move up here to the island of Rügen with our forces next. Actually, we're going to move here. Wait, nope. Nope. You see that Pomeranian force moving back in. We're going to head down south with the rest of the crusading army. I wanted to take Rügen, but that's not going to happen. This is going to be a very fast one here. Victorious Crusade. St. George has granted Queen Amelie victory in the Crusade of Pomerania. Wait, what just happened? Oh, uh, Queen Amelie of Pomerania. Your niece. Yeah, that was the only one that... I mean, House d'Anjou is now here. That's what it is. <laughs> Sorry, let me disband all real quick. Rewarded Amelie was rewarded her family's contribution in the recent crusade. And Amelie, of course, is the one we tried to have murdered, who is the head of the house. Is she the head of the house? She was, yes, she still is. And that hasn't gotten any easier now, unfortunately. So again, St. George has granted Queen Amelie victory in the crusade of Fort Pomerania. After defeating Cornell and her heathen warriors on several occasions, our warriors forced the enemies of the faith to admit their ignominious defeat with the occupied lands firmly under the leadership of a pious catholic ruler we can rest assured that the divine will of saint george has been enacted this is a glorious day for the true followers of the cross saint george is with us all right so here you can see it victory in the crusade of the kingdom for the kingdom of pomerania titles in the target kingdom are handed out to the beneficiaries Gold was divided, and Amelie, our beneficiary, the one we, the only choice we had, is now 
Queen, our war chest, so our share. We got 20% score. We got 2,480 prestige, 614 piety, and 748 gold. So be it, Deus Vold, for the faith. Glory, widely known. A new kingdom, you are known, dedication to your faith. Oh, how things change. With the establishment of a proper Catholic queen in Pomerania, the faithful can finally rest easy, knowing that St. George is smiling upon our good works. The fact that the new ruler of Pomerania belongs to my dynasty is only further proof of our proof, proof of our divine favor. I wonder what kind of ruler she will be. You will uh, you play... Okay. Oh. So you could switch from folk to Queen Emily, the head of House Anjou. Mm. It's time to focus back on my realm. No, this isn't the direction we're going to go. Now, that's really cool, actually. This is kind of cool. Uh, if this was just me, private save, without this whole wanting to establish the Angevin dynasty, just playing, uh, honestly, I would probably do that uh, just because it looks intriguing. But we're not going to do that. We want to establish the Angevin dynasty and empire. We're going to focus back on our realm. There you have it. The Kingdom of Pomerania. Queen Emily. Our niece. And yeah, by the way, she has no kids. She's not married. Um, and Folk. Folk is the primary heir. Hmm. Can we murder? Cannot murder on Queen Emily until 1100 AD. So eventually we could do that. Your liege... Regency ended, and with that, um, we are victorious crusaders with a lot of money. A lot of money in the bank. Uh, we can ask your head of faith for claims. Duchy of Champagne, Duchy of Provence, the Duchy of Lombardy. So, let's take a look. So we can grab Champ we can we can ask for the Duchy of Champagne or the Duchy of Provence. The Duchy of the Champagne or the Duchy of well, the Duchy yeah, the Duchy of Champagne. Of course, we will take we would take that. Request the claim. Greetings, Duke Fulk of Barry. I have pondered your request and have decided to recognize your claim on the Duchy of Champagne. There has come to light irrefutable proof that your ancestor did indeed rule the land in ancient times. I will prove myself a worthy ruler. So now we have pressed claims on the Duchy of Champagne and Anjou. What this then does, of course, pressed claims can be inherited. Ah, that's just cool. That is fantastic right there. Going for the other ones, Provence down here, anything in Italy, that just really didn't make any sense. I I really wished you would have gone for Poitiers, Aquitaine, Gascon. I mean, I would have taken those immediately. Champagne is great as well. Become just really powerful within France. That would be kind of cool. And we can ask for more uh, because we have so much piety. But, I mean, the Republic of Pisa, Venice, Lombardy, Provence, it just doesn't make any sense. Count Sigismund of Blois, we will definitely do that. We have too few knights. We are first in line for the Duchy of Pomerania, the County of Shishin. My dear, I'm honored by your request. We'll be glad to be your ally. Um, so, yeah, we can inherit quite a few titles here. Pomerania, that would be insane, to be perfectly honest. Potential alliances, let's see if any of these will jump in. No, of course the queen won't. Count Udes will not, and Arnaud will not either. That is not a surprise, if I am perfectly honest. So we could go to war for the entire duchy of the Champagne, and just take the whole thing. And become one of the ultimate powers within France at this point. That it would be quite the power play. I mean, the fact that 
the duchies are so broken up right now within France. Champagne kind of fell there. Poitiers would have been better. Aquitaine, Gascon. Any of these down here, which are more Angevin lands, would make more sense. What I will do here is we will look at fabricating claims. Um, where do we want to fabricate claims? If we head south here to Poitiers, Poitiers wouldn't be a bad one to gain. We don't have access to the sea. So Mont Montaigu might not be a bad one, but just slowly eating up Poitiers could be a good one. The county of La Marche, also not bad to go in that direction. Where else could we look at? Our niece here, Countess Venmond. Um, yeah, Aquitaine. Love to grab Aquitaine. No doubt there. But it would have to be somewhere really close. I mean, these are our lands. I'm not worried about them right now. We can fabricate a claim on Sablé and Men in our lands. Let's take a look real quick. Where are we sitting here? I mean, we're we're pretty strong. The King of England, of course, is extremely strong. He's allied with France. But uh, other than that, there's really not much we can do there. Poitiers would be a good one for southern expansion. I don't really want to worry about Brittany at this point. The Duke here. Do have any children that we could work with? Possibly. But I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to move down here to Poitiers. I would like access to the sea. So Montaigne, I mean, it's ugly. I mean, you want to talk about border gore at that point. But I think that's actually what we'll do. Not Poitiers itself. No, no, we're going to go for the heart. We're going to go for the heart of the duchy. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we may as well fabricate a lot of claims. We're going to work on fabricating. Claims. We have the money to start working on fabricating a lot of claims. Basically, just one after another, and then go to war and just take Poitiers completely. Uh, we can look at La Marche next as well, and obviously Champagne. Uh, where is he sitting right now? He's got 1,600. He's allied with Saint, and we have 1,900. We've got a huge contingency of allies that would come into a war just to take them. Thibault expects council position. Yeah, I'm not, not really big on that. Duchess Ava of Poitiers, that's right. What are his claims? The county of Poitiers is his claim. It's, it's Thibault's claim. I don't want that. He created a faction against us. Um, what can we do with him? Cannot imprison him. Um, I can revoke his title. Take away his title. I can murder him. No real point in doing that. We're just going to play that out. If he comes at us, we will simply crush him. Um, and I do want to go after Champagne. Again, the nice thing is that pressed claim will is hereditary. Uh, and that will come down to our son. We have an unpressed claim against Chatre. That's just part of Champagne. That drops. I'm not overly concerned with. We have lost two sons now. Uh, Joffrey, take a look at him. Decent, decent military. Uh, Amengad, she's of course betrothed to the Duke of Auvergne. Very powerful ally. Let's take a look at Julien. Who could we marry him off to? A story about. The fire roars, drinks have been had, and Amengad is calling out to me for a story. My first thought is of a famous French folktale, a classic that never fails to delight. On the other hand, what if I told a story of my own life, perhaps of the time I defeated Manasses at the Battle of Samur? Keep it traditional. You gain 15 stress because you are ambitious. You grow closer. My own story. 
Emingod gains 15, but you gain 75 prestige. It's all about me. I'm ambitious. Look at me, look at me, look at me. And because Folk is so ambitious, it might be time to turn on Champagne. Champagne, meanwhile, he is dealing, he is defending against Prince Bishop Flavio of Chalon in the war against tyranny. So, Duke Arabet of Champagne, their military strength is inferior to ours. I mean, he's at war right now as well. Might not be a bad time to strike, but first let's look in our own holdings here again. I think it's time to look at constructing some things. Bastions and curtain walls, crop fields, our castle. Can we upgrade? Mm, no, because we don't have the battlements. That's our French culture and there's nothing we can do about that. Angers in the meantime, Bastion Curtain Walls, Homesteads. Cannot upgrade this because Anjou has a keep building or its upgrades. Cannot construct a keep because we do not have the French culture does not have that. Okay, so we can't upgrade anything here, which is really frustrating. In Angers, what shall we add? Holdings tax is up by 4%. Let's build a, a blacksmith there. In Vendôme, what can we do here? Walls and towers might not be a bad thing to do here. So we'll construct walls and towers there. In Blois, earth ramparts, traps and ditches. Uh, well, we need the keep, and we can't do that again, as always. Let's see here, we've got camp cooks, bastion and curtain walls. Construct. We can construct a city for five years. Costs us 400 gold. Or we can abort the city construction and refund the cost. You know what? No, we're going to invest that and build the city. We still have a ton of money in our treasury to expand from here. And the next target should be Champagne for sure. Because then we can move in here, take Chartres, and then cut across. If we look at our allies... Where are our allies come in from? We have Auvergne in the far south. Uh, Sigismund of Troyes, who is internal. Uh, Poland, not worried about that. Um, uh, Montargis, Montargis, yeah. And Macon. So, I mean, our allies, it would take a while for them to come up from the south. But if I take a look here at Adalbert of Champagne. He's pretty strong. He has no allies. He's completely isolated. And he's at war right now. So it might not be a bad time to strike for the very ambitious. Again, Folk is ambitious. Folk is now 57 years old. And as an ambitious duke, he has the opportunity to strike for his own glory and that of his house to take Champagne and really grow his holding significantly within France. I mean, at that point, he might be the most powerful nobleman within France. But you know what? As always, we will leave that until the next episode. Because this things are getting really, really, really interesting now. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Moving into Champagne while it's building up our claims in the south. To head into the kind of traditional lands that you think of the Angevin dynasty of Aquitaine, Gascogne, and Poitiers. As I'm also losing my voice. And yes, and obviously, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're new. 
Till next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.